But if you're able to stand, grab your Bible, James 5, and verse number 7. James 5, 7, where the scripture says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman, that's a farmer, rancher, somebody who works the fields. The husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath not just patience, long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. And he's saying in the same way or after the same manner. Be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Do you ever understand that the coming of the Lord not once, not once in Scripture is the coming of the Lord ever given to us as a warning? It's always given as an encouragement. As an encouragement. Why do we fear the coming of the Lord. It's never meant to be something we fear. Always meant to be something we look forward to. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. In the meantime, grudge not one against another, brethren. How much time is wasted in the church of the living God, people grudging one against the other, people voicing their complaints, people whining, people tattling, gossiping, and James told the church, while we're waiting for Christ to come, don't waste your time doing that. It is not productive use of your time. Grudge not against one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets. Oh, we've got another example of patience. First example of patience that was given to us is an example that is given to us about farmers. But then he said the prophets that went before us, another example of patience. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, read the three word phrase, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. And that word patience does intimate patient endurance. You have heard of the patience of Job. Here's example number three. We know Job. He went through the ringer, didn't he? The patience of Job. And I've seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Then go to chapter number one and verse number three. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh, what's the word? Patience. Patience. Seems to me that when we look at the book of James, we can't overlook the fact that he discusses patience. I don't like to wait. I'm embarrassed to say how often I find myself impatient, drumming my fingers, just... I mean, sometimes a second feels like a minute, and a minute feels like an hour, and an hour feels like a year. Impatience. But everything in the scripture speaks towards the believer building into their life this matter of patience. One of the fruit of the Spirit, part of that group of spiritually gifted manifestations in our life is patience. My, how we need that. Peter said, but ye have need of patience. But let patience, verse 4, have her perfect or mature work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Help us, fathers, as we look at your word. Help us to be helped by looking at it. We ask it in your name. Amen. You could be seated. I want to look at three things about patience this morning as we understand in a greater way what the Bible is trying to teach us about patience. So often we get impatient because we feel like things or people are holding us back. Sometimes we get impatient because we feel like there are obstacles in our way that are blocking our progress. And we want those things gone yesterday. Just get that out of the way. 
so that I can go on with my life. Sometimes in this matter of patience, we get especially impatient when there are reoccurring problems, the same thing we dealt with once before, where we dealt with it with a measure of patience and then the same thing happens again and we deal with it again but we have less patience the second time. And then when our child comes the third time and does the same thing the third time, we fly off the handle. Why? Because we never really had patience to begin with. We endured it but we didn't have patient endurance. Isn't that true? And patience or the lack of it sometimes is manifested when things come up and, and I had to ask myself when I was working on this and asking myself David do you have the godly characteristic or the godly fruit of patience because oftentimes I do pretty good on some of these other things but when it's reoccurring things when the same person asks the same dumb question for the 15th time and it's like, I don't have time for this. Let's be honest. How many of you have ever used that phrase, I don't have time for this? Sure you have. And if you're not raising your hand, God will deal with your sin of lying. I don't have time for this. And that normally goes with, and within a sentence or two, the phrase, you people. <laughs> you people. Our problems come from the world we live in, the choices we make, the enemy we face, the people we know, the progress we gain, and the God we serve. And we're never going to move forward in this matter of patience if we don't acknowledge the problem, make a decision on it, find the scripture, what the Lord wants us to respond, and then learn and go forward. A few words about the power of patience where the scripture teaches us that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That's a powerful promise regarding patience that the saints of old were able to lay hold of heavenly promises and treasures because they had patience. James says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. And then we've read, of course, in chapter 5, which I'll not reread. Jesus told us that problems will be a commonality of the Christian life. In this world ye shall have tribulation. So tribulation is really that thing in our life. These troubles, these obstacles, people problems are the thing that are going to rub up against us. And that is going to show us either our need for our ability to have or our lack of patience. And that's just a really quick explanation about this matter of patience. Then I want to talk about next out of the scripture what the Bible tells us as far as examples of patience. The Bible gives us some tremendous examples of patience and we want to see in the word of God some tremendous examples of patience. We know that there were some individuals in the scripture who lacked patience. Do you remember a man named Esau? Esau lacked patience. You remember a man named Saul in the scripture? Saul lacked patience to allow God to work out problems, but rather took the matter in his own hands. And I picked a little illustration about patience that I think will help us to understand. Not too long ago, Jell-O celebrated its 100th anniversary. It's fascinating to understand that the man who actually invented Jell-O invented it in 1897. This man's name was Pearl Waite, and Waite was kind of a multi-jack-of-all-trades. He was a construction worker. He dabbled in making his own medicines and sometimes went door to door selling things that he made or homemade remedies. And one day when he was tinkering and playing around with some different medicines, he came up with the idea of mixing fruit flavoring with granulated gelatin. His wife named it Jell-O. 
This is Pearl Waite. That's the name of the man that invented Jell-O. Waite thought it was just another useless product, but he thought he had tried to peddle it. And unfortunately, sales did not go as fast as what Pearl thought that they should. And a few months after developing his product, he sold all of the rights and the development of his product to a man named Orator Woodward for $450. $450. Well, this man, Woodward, he knew a bargain when he saw one. He understood the value of marketing. And more than that, something that Pearl did not understand, Woodward understood the virtue of patience. With a little marketing and a little patience, Woodward turned his $450 investment. I want you to remember... We're talking about 1987, I mean 1897 dollars. In eight brief years, he turned that $450 investment into a million dollar business. Not a single relative today of Pearl Waite receives one penny from the 1.1 million boxes of Jell-O that are sold Every single day. Every day that much jello is sold. Wait. No, wait. He couldn't wait. And Woodbird capitalized on his lack of patience. Abraham is given to us in Scripture as an example. Of this matter of patience. There's no question that he's one of the most powerful symbols of faith in the Old Testament. But if there was anything lacking in Abraham's life, it was patience. God had given Abraham a promise that his seed would be like the sands of the sea. And Abraham got impatient and he listened to his wife. Those two things were critical mistakes. Sometimes wives talk crazy. And when Abraham's wife suggested that he take her handmaid as a surrogate wife, that was a bad idea. Abraham was so desperate to lay hold of the promises of God that he compromised the promise that was given. It's so odd because in chapter 15 of the book of Genesis, you see God reaffirming the promise that he made to Abraham when he left Ur of Chaldees. And in chapter 16, you see Abraham's lapse of faith. It cost him dearly. And we're going to have World War III when the Mosque of Omar is ripped off of the temple site so the temple can be rebuilt. Whose fault is it? Abraham's. Abraham's. Go to the Wailing Wall and observe the Orthodox Jews crying and praying at the wall to understand how that one decision made more than 4,000 years ago is still hurting people today. Lack of patience. Abraham's one of them. You know, the Bible shows that patience works. It really stands out about a man named David who was known as a man of patience. David was hunted down almost like an animal. And he spent, uh, he and 400 men spent almost seven years hiding out from the king who was trying to kill him. David retained his integrity. David was a man after God's own heart and he had the opportunity to kill his oppressor but he was too good of a man to do it. Better man than Saul was. But yet David, after David became king, became impatient. And the Bible shows us that ministries and personal victories do not come overnight. Sometimes they do not come in a year. And sometimes they do not come when you think they will come. But in time, the truth is what happened was that David became impatient. And his lack of patience with his situation with Michael ended up costing him very dearly. David said in Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. 
David was the same man that displayed patience in his life, but yet at other times displayed impatience. And I think that's a valuable lesson to us. Because sometimes we do well, but we need to make sure that we're always on guard. Then the Bible gives us in James 5 the example of Job. So think of Abraham. Think of David. Think, think of Job. <clears throat> Behold, we count them happy which endure. We've heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord and the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Despite the fact that, Dave, that Job was a man of integrity. Job was a man of moral integrity. The Bible says he was perfect in his generations. He loved God. He eschewed. He hated evil. He did sacrifices and worshiped the Lord as he should. He's perfect in his generations. But yet Job undergoes this great trial where his income is destroyed, his crops are destroyed, all of his children are killed, his body is racked with pain, and his wife turns on him and says, why don't you just curse God and die, and I can collect insurance. And he said, woman, you speak as the foolish women speak. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. In Job 19, when he's halfway through his trial, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day on the earth. He said in chapter 23, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, and I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him, he hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He said, he is putting it to me. And I can't see God right now. I can't see his ways. I look backwards, forward, left, right. It doesn't matter where I look. I can't see the Lord, but I'm still going to stay where I need to be. And in chapter number 42, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Here's what I want to say about Job. Patience works. So that's the explanation of patience and those examples from Scripture. But I want to see real quick, and then we'll be finished, the effects of patience in our life. When you cultivate patience, then you are allowing time for God to work. Most of the time when we aren't patient, we make a decision, we make a move, we cut off the opportunity for God to work in our life. Most of the time, our lack of patience is because we want to end a negative experience as quickly as we can. James says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and the latter rain. The farmer goes out, he prepares the ground. He plants the seed. He cultivates the ground so that the plant can grow. And in time, after the early rain and the latter rain, what happens? The harvest comes. It's funny because with children, when you're working with them and teaching them about planting and seeds, you know, they expect to plant a seed and the next morning the seedlings up. We know northern Michigan, it could take as long as 14 days. Five days, my foot. Nothing comes up in five days in Michigan. Nothing. More like ten days or two weeks. And then all of a sudden, boom, the plants come up. But then the package says 90 days. Remember, northern Michigan. Okay, 120 days. And we get squash and we get vegetables. But we do get squash and vegetables. The Lord said, while the, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. What comes between the seed and the harvest? Time. Time. We always go by the minute. God goes by the harvest. We go by the minute. God goes by the harvest.